All right, Francis, you were uh, <laughs> you were pessimistic as a Democrat go, yeah, just moments ago. Um, what would give you hope in the last week and a half of the election? Is there an October surprise, as John Grease mentioned, that you think could galvanize more Democrats and say, hey, we're going to see a bigger turnout at the polls? Uh, historically, the problem is, is that I talk to a lot of people who are Democrats or supportive of the candidates, but somehow just don't get out to the polls. Talking about it doesn't get it done. You got a GOTV, get out to vote, and that's the only way the Democrats are going to win. We need more numbers. Tough to come by here. And Susan, you, your eyes were raised when you saw the number of young people who are not voting. That it holds with tradition, but if you're a Republican, at least in this climate, it seems like a positive thing. Um, yeah, I would like to see more young people vote. I've you know, it, it makes for good citizenship, and, and once they vote, I think they understand the importance of voting. And when you think about Glenn Jacobs, and I go back to that race this year, he won by 17 votes, and then six more were added on from absentees or something. 23 votes elected that man. So think of the people that, you know, that made a difference. So I think we've got a couple of legislative races in, in our county that are pretty close. One of them is going to be Eddie Smith, Gloria Johnson. That one's always within 100 votes, votes, 200 yeah. votes, something like that. The other one that I'm hearing is close, and I haven't seen polling numbers, is Martin Daniel, representing Martin Daniel and Greg mm -hmm. McKay. And so people go vote. These, mm -hmm. these elections really do matter. It matters who's in the Senate. It matters who's governor. It matters on the local levels and state representatives. So I encourage everybody to go vote. Whichever way you're going to vote, I hope you'll vote Republican, but John, vote. When, when we look at um, the, the last run here for especially the, the uh, gubernatorial candidates, they've, had, they've been pretty nice to each other in the debates. Carl Dean and Bill Lee um, promising really not to go negative in television ads. And Unlike they, the Senate, and I they might have not, say. <laughs> they have not done that. Um, is there an issue? Health care seems to be the biggest divisive issue if you're looking at those candidates and trying to decide who, who to choose. Health care is it. If, if there's some kind of definer where, you know, Carl Dean, for example, is sticking out. Now, I, I have heard commentary that says that elsewhere in the United States, health care is an issue that really matters as well to other people and that Democrats are using that as an issue. They're not afraid to use it. But, you know, look at the polling numbers. I, I think the gubernatorial race is over with. Bill Lee's won it. Unlike the Senate race, as you said, uh, that, that the governor's race tight. has been it's fairly tight. mild and You know, the nice. one thing I want to mention, Mike Ragsdale talked about how um, he thinks that the Republicans will keep the Senate. Phil Bredesen told us that same thing. He doesn't think. He, he, that's correct. And they now think they actually might even pick up a seat or two in the Senate, not only hold their own, but pick up one or two. And the House is certainly in play for a while. Wait, wait. You know. dream on, little broomstick cowboy. Let's wait till we count the votes we will. before you start ordering we will. new drapes. We will. <laughs> Thank you for watching Inside Tennessee. You can catch our other episodes online at WBIR.com and listen to our podcast there as well. We hope to see you next week.